Hello, I'm Clover, and this is the gas puzzle originally posted by Philip Newman on April 18th, 2024, and it's called Crunchity, and there's a little bit of a story behind why it has that name. So if you've been following the channel for the last month or so, you might be aware that Philip has kind of been working on this series of puzzles with a common logical and visual theme where they all have killer cages with this very distinctive layout of horizontally aligned three cell cages at the top of the grid and at the bottom of the grid and also some vertically aligned cages in the rest of the grid and they all to my recollection include uh, one other constraint this one also has thermo and it's been really interesting to me to kind of watch this develop as i've been doing these walkthroughs because i think that it's given philip this opportunity by just exploring one theme in all of his puzzles for an extended period of time to expose you guys to some of the kind of trickier more technically complex aspects of what you can do with that theme um admittedly if you walked into this series of puzzles towards the end you might struggle a little bit with some of them but it's been kind of interesting to see it's not something i've really tried in my gas puzzles yet um it's been interesting to see puzzles that kind of build on each other from the same setter and kind of use the same ideas in like more complex and more challenging ways and so what that has to do with this being called crunchity is um we will very often describe puzzles that are just like a little bit on the tricky side a little on the technical side for gas as being crunchy um as being kind of puzzles that are kind of mathy we'll describe as crunchy and this one definitely got the crunchy uh nomenclature when we were testing it it's a really nice puzzle i really really enjoyed this one while i was testing it i've enjoyed a lot of puzzles in this series but this is definitely well into the tricky side for gas at least for me i think i described it as very mathy when i tested it but we're gonna go slow here i'm gonna walk you through it and let's figure it out together so normal sudoku rules apply I'm placing the digits one through nine once each in each row each column and each heavily outlined three by three region we also have some killer cages so those are these dashed outline cages and the tiny digit in the top left or tiny number in the top left tells you the sum of the digits in that cage. There are also thermometers. In this case, they kind of coincide with the cages. And those tell you that the digits increase along the thick gray line starting from the round bulb and going upwards towards the tip. So for instance, if we didn't have the killer cage total, we could say that this was going to be four seven and nine or something like that because the digits have to increase from the circle to the other end so let's start solving so we're going to start at the top like we have with all the puzzles in this series and observe that the only way to make a sum of seven in the three cells that see each other is for it to be one two and four and because of the thermometer we know what order those have to go in to make eight in three cells, we also have to have a one. If we were to not use a one, the smallest our total could be would be two plus three plus four, which is already nine. So we do have to have a one. And if there's a one on the thermometer, it's gotta be at the end. So there's our one. Now that tells us, and this is gonna be a common theme throughout the puzzles in this series that Philip's been doing, that tells us there's a one here, there's a one here. So there must be a one down here because otherwise you couldn't put a one in row three anywhere. And again, if there's a one on a thermometer, it has to go on the low end. You can't put a one in the middle or on the end of a thermometer. To fill out this eight cage. Okay, so the two ways to make an eight cage with three cells that see each other are one, three, four, and one, two, five. So one case is one, then two, then five, and another case is one, then three, then four. To make a nine cage with a one in it and three cells that all see each other are in the same cage, we could go one plus two plus six, or we could go one plus three plus five. If we try to go one plus four, then our next digit would also have to be a four, which is a bit of a problem. So we're gonna leave those on the table for now. We're gonna come back to them. Let's look at this 10 cage. So the smallest that this cell could be is a five, and the smallest that this cell could be is a three because we've already used one, two, and four here, and we need two digits, one bigger than the other. So if this is a three and this is a five, then that would be a two. So this isn't quite minimal. We could possibly make this a one, and then we could go just one bigger with this. And the only way we could make this just one bigger would be to take this instead of being a five, we would have to make it a six. We can't make this bigger than three because then we would bump into this four up here, or we'd have to make it like way bigger, in which case we could no longer make a sum of 10. 
So no matter what we do, it seems like this has to be a three. And if that's a three, then this is a two and a six because that rules out three from the cell. And now we have this situation where we have twos here and here, which places a two there. That means that the last digit in the eight cage is a five, which makes this a six. And to finish our 10 cage makes that a one. So you see there's kind of this interaction between these horizontal cages and these thermometers that's starting to let us incrementally fill out the beginning of the grid. The next place I looked while I was testing this was this 13 cage right here, because it interests me that this can't have a two in it, because that two in the column sees the whole cage. It also can't have a one in it, because we just placed a one in its region. So what can we have? Well, the absolute smallest we could make it now would be three, four, five, with no one and no two. So three plus four plus five is 12. So we're almost to 13. The only way we can get away with making this just one bigger, well, we can't increase the three, it would be four, four, five. Uh, we can't increase the four, it would be three, five, five. We would have to just increase the five. So we gotta go three, four, six to make that a 13 cage. Now I'm gonna move down here because one other thing about this series of puzzles that Philip's been doing is that they are very heavily symmetrical and that's kind of been a help to, um, to getting us through some of the trickier ones because if we figured something out up here, we get to go kind of think through it again using what we've learned down here with just slightly different numbers. So down here, 23 and three is always gonna be six, eight, nine and we have the order because of the thermo. 22 and three will always have a nine in it. Your two options are five, eight, nine, and six, seven, nine. The nine on a thermo will always be in the end. So this is five or six and this is seven or eight. That tells us that there is definitely a nine here. So if we have a 21 cage with a nine in it, the other two digits have to sum to 12, but with no nine. So that's either a four and then an eight or a five and then a seven. We don't know which one yet, but we're gonna work over here just like we worked up here to figure it out. So the biggest that these cells could be is that could be a five and that could be a seven. And if that's the case, this is an eight. So that's not quite maximal. We could possibly make this one lower. And just like we did up here to make this one lower, we could make that a four. We can't take this digit and make it a six to make this lower though, because there's already a six in the region. So that's gonna be a seven no matter what. And then that's either a four or five, that's an eight or a nine. So that's a seven, that's an eight, that's a four. Then we have eights in these two positions. So the eight in row eight has to go there, making this a five. And we do the same exact kind of move that we did up here, finishing out this cage. So now we need to make 17 and we can't use an eight and we can't use a nine. So the absolute biggest we could make this cage would be if it was five, six, and seven. That sums to 18, not 17. So let's try to lower it by one to go for 17 and make it four, six, seven. So now the grid is starting to look a little bit more filled out. So let's carry on. Let's look at some of these restricted columns and do a little bit of Sudoku. So we need in this column a two, a five, a seven, and an eight. So the eight definitely can't go in these two cells because we already have an eight in the region. That can't be a five because there's a five in the row. Here we need a two, a three, a five, and an eight. This can't have a two, two in the region already. And we can't have a five here because there's a five in the row already. Now, if we look at these corners, these regions are also a bit restricted at this point. These are going to contain five, seven, eight, and nine. The five is not there because there's a five in this row. The eight is not there because there's an eight in this column. This is going to contain one, two, three, and five. The two is not there. The five's not there because there's a five in this row and a two in this column. The next place I looked while I solved this, once I had like these pencil marks over here and had a little bit more penciled in, is I looked at these cages, and this I think is why I gave the feedback to Philip that this one felt mathy to me. I don't know if this is strictly necessary to solve. If you found another way, tell me about it in the comments, but this is how I did it, so it's what I'm gonna show you. So what I did is I took 13 plus 18, and I said, okay, that's a sum of 31. And then I also have this one. So these cells I have highlighted right now, that's a total sum of 32. Well, an entire Sudoku region, the digits one through nine once each, sums to 45. So what do I have left over to put in these two cells? So I've got 32 here and then 45 minus 32 is 13. So these two have to sum to 13. And so I looked at these numbers and I said, how do I make a sum of 13 out of those numbers? Well, I certainly can't involve a two in it. So the two is not there. 
7 plus 8 is too big, 5 plus 7 is too small, so it must be 5 plus 8 equals 13. And that has the nice side effect of telling me exactly what three digits I have left over. That's a 279, and I can kind of do a sanity check on this and say, well, is 2 plus 7 plus 9 equal to 18? Yes, it is. So that's good. That makes this an 8 by Sudoku, makes this a 5, and makes this a 7-9 pair. Let's do the same move over here symmetrically. So 17 plus 12 is 29. I have an additional 9, that brings me up to 38, and that tells me these two cells have to sum to 45 minus 38, which is 7. How do I make 7 out of these digits? 2 and 5 is the only way to do it. That tells me exactly what the three digits remaining are, and because of this thermometer, I know what order they go in. Sudoku tells me this is now a 2 and a 5, and that's a 1-3 pair. So now I have these beautiful columns where I have almost all of my digits filled in. These are going to be 3 and 6, I know the order because of the 6 here. These guys are going to be at 7 and 4, and I know the order because of the 4 here. I can also grab these real quick. There's a 2 in this row, so that's a 7 and that's a 2. Uh, this isn't a 5 because of the 2-5 pair. There's an 8 in this row, which makes this a 3 and makes this an 8. So if I start to finish these regions, that's going to be 5 and 9. I know the order because there's a 5 there, and the 5-9 resolves my 7-9. These are going to be 1 and 5. That makes this a 3 and 1. So now let's start working on the middle, and we're going to kind of start on these edge regions and just work our way into the middle of the puzzle to grab those last two cages. So here we need a 3, 6, and 9, and here we need a 4, 7, and 8. So what can we do with this 11 cage? Well, the biggest digit here definitely can't be 4, because if it was, the absolute biggest we could go with this cage would be like 2, 3, 4, which only sums to 9. So the biggest digit here is definitely 7 or 8. So what if it's 7? If it's 7, we have a total of 11 minus 7 left over for these two cells, which is 1 and 3. And if it's 8, then our total is 1 and 2. Either way, interestingly, there is a 1 there. Okay, so now if we go down here, we can do the same thing with the 19 cage. So these are going to be 2, 3, and 6, and these are going to be 1, 4, and 7, and that's just by Sudoku. And here I can actually place the 1 real quick because I have 1s in these columns now. Couldn't quite do that before. Spoiler, I'm going to get to place a 9 up here in the same way. If this was a 6, the minimum of this cage would be 6, 7, 8, which is not 19. It's too big. It's 21. So that's not a 6. Now, if this was a 2, this would be a sum of 17, which would have to be 8, 9. If this was a 3, it would have to be 7, 9. Either way, there's a 9. That rules 9 out of this cell and gives me a 9 right here. Okay, now I have a 4, 7, 8 triple vertically here, and I have a 2, 3, 6 triple vertically here, and that's going to let me use Sudoku to fill in some more digits. So I have what left over? Well, I've placed a 1, I've placed a 4, 7, 8 triple, I've placed a 5, and I've placed a 9. So what do I still need? I need 2, 3, and 6. That's the only options for these three cells. This is not a 6 because there's a 6 in the row, and that does a couple things for me. It gives me this 2, 3 pair, which places a 6 here. And that bounces back, that 3 makes this a 2. So this is not a 2 or a 3, that's a 6. And now I can take care of both of my cages. 1 and 2 plus 8 is 11. 2 and 9 is 11 plus 8 is 19. And that's a 5, that's an 8. That is a 5 and a 2. And now we are go mode. We can do classic Sudoku to finish it off. So that's a 6 and a 7. 4 and a 7, 4 and a 7, and that is a 4 and a 5. Beautiful. Um, I spent a little time staring at this before I um, tried to solve it for a third or fourth time um, to share it with you guys, so this is not my actual time. But rest assured, my actual time was quite a bit longer than, than usual on this particular puzzle. This was a spicy one. Hopefully you found it to still be figure outable, and even if you didn't, um, thanks for sticking it out with me, and I hope that this walkthrough helped you out a little bit. Uh, give me a comment if you found any alternatives to any of the things that I did here. I'd be curious to hear about it, and I will catch you next time.